Hello my fellow randoms, my name is Xaverman117, also known as Simon, and today I have yet another ship review for you, courtesy of a BR community member named Rohan. This ship is called the Marco Polo Mark III, and I must say the design intrigues me. Straight up, you can see that the design of the ship is very much a sphere, and that alone distinguishes it from other ships. It has multiple floors, as you will see, all dedicated to different purposes, and as a result, it is very easy to get lost in. Fortunately, Rohan provided me with a map, and as a result, earns a few points there. We'll start with the hangar. This hangar is fairly spacious and can accommodate a small spacecraft, which was also included in the dot .ra file. I like this hangar, not because it stands out, but because it blends in. The hangar blends so well with the style of the ship and doesn't stand out in a bad way to the rest of the ship that I can't help but like it. I also like how it opens up and widens inside. If you go through the hangar, you will find a storage area and corridors that lead to the storage area, filled with, as expected, cargo crates. The storage area is rather unremarkable, and nothing really good can be said about it. But on the same note, nothing really bad can be said about it either. The storage area does its job, but no more. In the middle of this area, you will see a hole. This hole goes all the way from the top of the ship to the very bottom. This is the spine of the ship, and in many cases, it is the only method of travel between the numerous decks. I have no idea how this spine works, whether it's a Halo-style grav lift or a dangerous hole to be avoided, but I can say for certain that this would have benefited significantly from more purpose and design, such as adding an elevator rather than just a gaping hole. I could be wrong, and there could be a design that I'm missing in this particular area. Directly above the storage area is the crew quarters. This is multiple levels of crew accommodation, and I must say that I like the design. The rooms themselves strike a good balance between feeling cramped, but functional, and open and comfortable. The addition of a table to the rooms adds the feeling of it being an apartment, without detracting from the obvious shipboard accommodation that it is intended to be. I must also point out at this point that I fully agree with the choice of window frames as a table. This is an excellent one providing both leg room to the sitters at the table and a suitable tabletop for people who want to use it. Above the crew quarters, up the gaping hole in the spine of the ship, is nestled the, and I quote Rohan's map here, the Science Center and Computer Room. This translates to a room jam-packed with more television screens and digital displays than you can poke a stick at, and yet would still seem to impart a feeling of space and freedom. Surely not something that you would find in a science lab in a computer room, right? Wrong. Rohan's design has allowed him to cram this room full of old PCs and MacBooks and still have the room to have a keyboard fight. Admit it, you've done it. Directly above the keyboard fighting arena, we come to the Polar Observation Deck, a clever way of saying the Observation Deck at the top. There's not much to be said about the room, as it's a room designed for staring at things. However, I will say that the design makes you feel that you are definitely at the top of the ship, as the domed roof reflects the outside hull and its shape. And on the outside of the aforementioned hull, we have the polar battery. Simply another fancy way of saying the guns at the top of the ship. This area is fairly unremarkable, but deserves a mention because it's on Rohan's map. Now it's time to return to the storage area and venture down into the floors below. And right below the storage room, we have, and once again I quote Rohan here, the equatorial drive ring, support systems, and RCS thrusters. Let me tell you, I don't know what an equatorial drive ring is, but boy does it sound fancy. This room is perhaps my favourite of the ship, simply because of the sheer amount of tech that is stuffed into this room. And like the computer room, or keyboard fighting ring above it, it still has a measure of space. If you like fancy tech, you'll like this room. There's some very clever use of prefabs here by Rohan, and I urge you to see for yourself what Rohan has done here, as it's quite cool and worth your time. Just inset from this room, but still below the storage area, lies the command centre, the heart of the ship, and the only place where the gaping hole, I mean spine of the ship, is broken. Good work, command centre. All joking aside, I really like this room. I mean, this room is really command centre and makes you think that you're in a command centre. Also, the design of this room would make for a rad boss fight. Imagine some big mutant dude on that pedestal. Woof, awesome. And continuing the tour of the ship through the doors on the bottom layer of the command centre, we come across the conference and briefing rooms, a series of rooms designed to tell people aboard everything they need or want to know. There are quite a few of these rooms, and I like the whole light look of the area. It really works. I think that with the sheer amount of chairs, this ship would be a great mobile base slash meeting place for diplomats. Just my opinion, though. Venture down into the hatches, and you'll find yourself in the generator room, with a wall of blue glass between you and the main engine and jump drive. 
I presume this whole area is designed to provide power to the ship and the technical watsits in the ship. The whole multi-tiered thing really works for this area, and I have to say that I like this area quite a bit. And now we get to the small parts of the ship. Only two are worth noting in this case. As you may have noticed, this ship is armed with several embedded gun batteries. And I must say, these batteries are above average in their design. They are seamlessly integrated with the ship itself and do not discriminate on corners. The corner guns are as good as the flat guns. Also worth noting is the airlock at the bottom. It's fairly basic. It lets people in. Enough said. And now, we inevitably come to the score. What do I think? This ship by Rohan scores. Well, let's look at the pros and the cons to the ship. In favour of the ship, it's unique, well designed, and surprisingly spacious. There's also have some of the better interiors that I've actually seen thus far. But against it is its complicated navigation. While you can get used to the ship easily enough, going from point A to point B will probably send you through some unwanted rooms. But not as many as I would expect. Also, I think in some areas Rohan may have gone a wee overboard a little on the prefabs. A few less would maybe provide a better look. After all, less is more. Some functional events would be nice as well, but the design does limit that somewhat. So with those factors considered, we come to the final score. And after some careful deliberation, I think that the Marco Polo earns an 8 out of 10. I thought originally of giving it a 7, but then realised that nothing was really holding it back from an 8, and thus I believe it deserves such. At this point, Rohan, assuming he's watching, is probably asking, where is this other ship that I included with this one? My answer is quite simple. I'd try not to review two ships in one review if I can avoid it. Simply put, if I get a whole bunch of other smaller ships, I'll try and review them all in one review. And assuming that event comes along, the ship, which I've... the name escapes me at the moment, I will certainly review in that if it ever comes along. Anyway, I'd like to thank you all for watching. If you're new around here and you liked the commentary, please drop me a like and tell me that you appreciated this video, and consider subscribing to become a random today. I'd love a new random. Thanks again for watching guys, this is Avman117, signing off.